Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Good. I love that you've just gone full like tank top, jersey, no sleeves, guns out, suns out, funds out, guns out. Yeah. Um, and obviously the poshy poshy headband. You you have a look and you're sticking to it now. Yes, sir. You got to. I mean, I did give out two of these yesterday. Uh, Lena had her birthday party. Mm-hmm. I, I wore it because I don't give a fuck anymore. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, you got kind of that like little chuckle from people like, ha you're wearing a headband. Yeah. That, then it became, hey, that, that's pretty cool. And then I was giving out two of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Same thing happened to me. I was on a Zoom call with a family member. And uh, they started calling me a pirate, a Vietnam vet. Uh, looked like I just got out of Saigon in 1972. Granted, like, I also don't give a fuck anymore either. So I was yeah. just like in like, a raggedy tank top, yeah. like crazy shorts and my hair was out of control. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I showed them a little bit more. Showed them, you know, this is it's stretchable. It's very comfortable. Very comfortable. It's breathable. It cools yeah. you down when you sweat. It yeah. absorbs when you sweat. And, uh, you know, next thing they know, like, well, wh- where can you get it? Where can you get mm-hmm. it? If I was, mm-hmm. if I was looking, I'll send you the link. Yeah, I'll send you the course. link. So any of you, uh, Poshi Poshi employees out there who are simple mind fans, I'm sure, I'm sure they're out there somewhere in the, in the vast land of new England. Yeah. We, we are available for sponsorship. We, we, we release five shows a week. We're a regular radio program and we got slots open. So yeah. give, give us a jingle. Yeah great 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 product great product i wear it every day now every day every day now absolutely wonderful product happy labor day to you by the way happy labor day to you as well uh this one this this show is actually dedicated to all of the laborers yes so not not bill (laughs) not you (laughs) not bill not well look definitely not me i am a uh (laughs) <laughs> I'm a salesman through and through, but uh, yeah, I haven't used my hands in a long, long time for anything. Take Bill that sexually, whoever you want. <laughs> Bill, Bill didn't work for basically a year and still continues to just not work. So yeah, yeah. And, so he, and in fact, him either. he's not working with us today. He's actually on assignment. So I guess we might be able to call that work. That's as far as we can go. Unless Ray, you've gotten an update on that. Uh, he is trying to lock down a very special guest for us. Hopefully, ah. it comes through. So he's on assignment, trying to work his magic today. Okay, then at least then at least he is um, working in in some fashion. And I of assume course, by guest you just mean a big bag of weed. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Simple Mind Sports Show, ladies and gentlemen. This is Monday, headline September seventh, Labor Day. Bravo, Richard. Thank Bravo. you. Bravo. I had to I had to click my phone to make so, and then, <laughs> right. it, and then it opened, and the date came in front of me. Uh, yeah, Labor Day. Everyone, kick back, have a beer, grill something. And uh, let's talk some sports. It's going to be depressing. I'm sorry, but we are going to talk sports. Here we go. Yes. Ray, we were wrong. We were wrong. We were wrong. We were so wrong about 100%. The, about the Boston Celtics and the way that they would respond to the Game Three disaster that was Ob Adebayo hitting a corner three with 0.5 seconds left. The Boston Celtics could have, should have been up 3-0 going into Sunday's game four. Instead. 2-1, and we said that they would be motivated, driven, pissed off, ready to come back and lay down the wood, and it would be tight, but they would win. No, 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 no. They were mentally fucked from tip-off. Yep. yep. Oh, my. Especially Jalen Brown. I mean, he did not look right. I believe he went uh, two for 11 yesterday. Um, from just three from point three. three, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. Had, he, also, threes, he was in corner threes all day, and he kept jacking them up like, oh, maybe this one will go in. Maybe this one will go in. Nope, no, sir. They're not going to no. go in for you today. I mean, I respect the shooter-shoot game, uh, but when you combine that with the fact that Kemba Walker had only nine shots, and when you're in the fourth quarter and m- miraculously still in that game, Jalen Brown, 
I don't know if you remember the sequence, but I think they were probably down seven or, or eight at the time because that's basically what they were down the entire fourth quarter. Jalen Brown got a wide open three on the wing, shot it, front rimmed it. I think Tice, maybe someone else got the offensive rebound. They kicked it around, went back to Jalen. He was yeah. wide open again. Two seconds had come off the shot clock, fired that <laughs> fucking thing up again, yeah. clink, another goddamn brick. Yeah. By, meanwhile, Kemba Walker standing next to him just like, dude, you haven't hit all game. Stop shooting. That, and that's the problem I have with Jalen. Like, okay, I get that shoot or shoot. You're, you're in a slump this whole series. You got to get out of it. You got to continue to shoot. But when you're in the fourth quarter, your whole team has been on the shoot all game. You got a guy next to you that might be able to hit the shot more than you, or you have a wide open lane in the take fourth the quarter. Take the lane. Go yeah, to the rim. I was saying that too. I was preaching that on my couch last night, just yelling at my TV, drive to the goddamn basket, dude. You have the lane, just drive. Because you he can either had, drive or lay up or dish it off to Tice or whoever's down low. Just drive right. to the basket. Jesus. And he, he's, he's turned into a decent playmaker when he drives too. So he, he was mentally screwed. He only had three other shots out beyond the three-point line last night they were fucked so yeah. look uh quickly get into it uh, i'll just read through my show notes i didn't even bother to like write an actual recap because my recap was they sucked but uh, I, it, as we went over jalen was ice cold boston shooting everybody was ice cold nobody could hit a shot i think that they were tight stiff from the, that bad loss um i'll Seven. give this to can i just interrupt you when you're saying bad shots seven for 35 from three-point land yesterday as a team Mm-hmm. As a team, that 20%. 20%. That is, that is awful. God, you can't win a game shooting 20% from three-point line. Not I awful. will I will give them a little bit of credit here. Obviously, they they. I want to get into the psychology of this team a little bit after this, but I want to give Ted a t- credit to Jason Tatum, who was pr- the, probably the sole guy on that team forcing his way into the paint and trying to deliver paints from the point, and he did a pretty good job at it. Um, what he finished with 24 or whatever it was 24. Yeah. Um, it, and this is my, I know you're going to shit at me. Cause you say that I hate Jason Tatum. He just lacks a very, very important part of an offensive game. And you saw it last night. You saw it last night when, when Lowry drew the offensive foul on when he has the ball in his hand, going to the hoop, not under control, his handle sucks. He has no decisive move in that position. He should not be in that position. That's yeah. my only point. When he can get the ball on the block, he's got good moves. When he can get the ball on the wing and that step back three-pointer is fucking deadly. When he can get a one-on-one where he does not have to dribble drive, I'm good. Give him the ball. When he has to dribble drive outside of 19 feet, 23 feet, he's, he's just, he just lacks that in his game right now. That's, oh, yeah. that's been my point for weeks and months and a year. And, and it, God damn, did it come fruition last night with that offensive foul on Kyle Lowry sticking his arm out like that. And by the way, he does that all the damn time and complains to the ref after every fucking play. So, yeah, I got a little bit of problem with Jason Tatum right now. How did yeah, you he, think he played? He, he complained every – from the opening jump yesterday, he complained to the refs. I'm surprised he didn't get teed up because every time you drive to the rim, you'd point at one official, the same official, every fucking time, like, where's the foul? Where's the foul? It's just – it must be a Duke thing because all those guys from fucking Duke bitch about that shit. I think it is a Duke thing, and I think – this whole this whole thing is a little bit of a Duke vibe. And what I mean by that is mentally being broken by a shot and just not being able to kind of get o- kind of get over it. I, and I'll give them credit. I mean, God, they gutted it out. So if if they were shooting twenty percent, the Raptors were seventeen of forty four for thirty nine percent from the three. So mm-hmm. fifty one points versus twenty one. You got outscored from the three point line by thirty points. A lot of that was your own doing. I thought they're perimeter defense was garbage daniel tice uh enemy number one on that shit it's fred van fleet and kyle lowry this is what they do they shoot three pointers you don't want to hedge in that shit you said his name wrong it's i'm sorry max Max i'm sorry i'm sorry max van fleet max van fleet who finished with i think 17 points he didn't kill you but every shot he took felt like it went in oh yeah him and tice and robert williams you're not hedging you how are you not hedging Every time they get beat, oh, my God. It's so so frustrating to watch. If Time Lord got better on defense, he would be a valuable starter on this team. I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Time Lord has to get better on defense. That's, to me, Brad Stevens is – this was a 
classic Brad Stevens playoff game that the adjustments weren't made and there was not a coaching style to, to, to get them out of what they had 18 assists, right? They had yeah. 18 team assists on a, on a Celtics night where they win, they have 30 plus. Oh yeah. To me, a lot of that is Brad Stevens. You could see it from fucking the jump. It was one-on-one ball. Everyone, they got down early. They missed a bunch of shots, and they tried to play hero ball. That is exactly how this team fucking loses. They're mentally fragile. They don't know how to win. There's no veteran on that team, and their coach does not have to win, know how to win either. And when you – I mean, God damn it, I don't want to say I told you so on a loss like this, but they're a front-running team. They do not know how to win the game when adversity hits the way that it hit last night. Oh, I think yeah. they're close. I think last night showed that they're close, yeah. but they're not there. Because they didn't give up. I mean, not until, like, there's two minutes left in the game, and they knew that it was out of reach. But they were coming, trying to make comebacks all the way through. So, it's not like they gave up. I mean, Brad Stevens needs to do a better job coaching, calling timeouts when the Raptors are going on those runs. He was not calling timeout at a the good time. Like, he would just let them keep going and going. Maybe, like, something would switch up, but it's not going to. You need to call those timeouts when they start getting hot like that, especially from three. It's Those exact- guys are just making threes. You got to call a timeout and stop that momentum. It's exactly what we said. Uh, one of the keys of this playoffs was going to be Brad, Ta- Brad Stevens and using his timeouts correctly and managing, managing the game for his young team and even non-young players like Kemba Walker who have never been in this scenario before. You, everybody is inexperienced, and you have to lean on your coach for that who is also inexperienced. So – this was my biggest fear going into these playoffs that they would run into these type of games and they're going to have to learn on the fly to get that defeated. But what you're talking about, Ray, where Brad Stevens not calling time out, I remember specifically it was another Jason Tatum tried to make too many moves on the perimeter, got sloppy, lost the ball. Raptors went down, got an easy bucket, and, um, and they went up by seven or eight or maybe even ten at that point. And I'm screaming timeout at the TV. In the third yeah. quarter, which we all yeah. know the Celtics suck in the third quarter. I'm screaming timeout. Burn it, Brad. Who gives a fuck at the end of the game? Burn your timeout. If you get down by ten in the third quarter every fucking game, who cares if you have one left in your pocket at the end? Yeah. Call a timeout. Straighten them out. Give them a pep talk. Give them a play out of the timeout so they can get a two instead of Kemba Walker dribbling around for 13 seconds and then someone hawking up a three. Because yeah. that's what happens inevitably every single god damn oh, yeah. time. Yeah. I had a couple other uh, points in this. I just thought that the, the defense was pretty slow and lazy. They were unmotivated. They were, they were mentally broken. There was, in the third, speaking of Brad, there was a lineup out there that I just went, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know, I know the lineup you're speaking of. Go ahead. <laughs> you had, uh, you had the Williams twins times two, yep. Grant and Robert Williams, Brad Wanamaker at <laughs> yep. the point guard. You had Jalen Brown, who at that point had not hit a shot basically mm-hmm. the entire fucking game. I think Kemba was in there too, who just wasn't shooting the ball, yeah, yeah. at all. That lineup was in the third quarter. I don't think they scored a point. They played for about four minutes. Somehow the defense kept them in it. And, but they, but you know, they they lost the lead in that. I'm just looking at it going. Meanwhile, Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Fleet, and Pascal Siakam didn't sit the entire game. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like I can see Brett. You know, your team's struggling. You want to shake it up, get some energy in there. No problem. That lineup played for almost four minutes. Almost four minutes against the starters of the Raptors. But you have to also say, too, Tatum did get hurt at one point, which he got up and he looked slow. He was, like, jogging down the court. I think it was in the second quarter, so I don't know if that was playing it because he he played over 40 minutes. I think he led the team in minutes with 43 or 44. Yeah, you're right. But I think at one point he came out just because of that injury. So, I don't know. That's fine. And, look, maybe it was injury-related. Either way. You don't play that lineup for four minutes, though. Not for no. four minutes. I mean, no. as much as bad as Marcus – we need to get on Marcus Smart's ass, too, because as much as praise we gave him for game two, it, well-deserved. His last two games have been garbage. Um, at least six turnovers in every game. I think he had seven or eight this game. Yeah. This is the Marcus Smart quagmire. You know, it, it, you, it's like clockwork. He plays so well and so in tune for – weeks at a time and then he has one of these games where he lights it up offensively and then for the next two or three or a week he thinks he's Allen Iverson and (laughs) forgets about all the things that make him good and gets lazy on offense and tries to jack up threes it's like how many of those two specifically I remember he pumped fake got the guy in the air and then stepped back for a three when the lane was wide open wide open 
It's like, you're not Allen Iverson, dude. Like, you get a pump fake, either draw the foul or go to the lane and, and create. You're not Ray Allen. Jesus. And that's, and that's the other thing Brad Stevens should be telling these guys. Like, you guys aren't hitting from three. You're 17 for, or seven for 30. What do we say? Seven for 39 or whatever it was. Yeah, seven yeah. for 35. Seven for 35. Sorry. Drive. Drive to the goddamn basket. You guys aren't hitting these threes. Drive. And I think that comes from a good coach, you know. You got to tell these guys, stop jacking these threes. Drive to the lane. You're going to have an open guy underneath. Stop shooting these three pointers. Yeah. So with all that, so let me give you let me give you the the statistics, and then I'll I'll give you a little bit of positive news. I think um, Siakam came alive, owned Jalen Brown. I mean, it it's a toss up for me. Jalen or Tice is the worst player on the floor last night. I almost leaned Tice just because he was oblivalent on the offensive side. At least Jalen woke up a little bit and was trying. Yeah. Some seemed like Tice was just lost out there the last two games, honestly. Uh Siakam went for 23 and 46 minutes. Lowry went for 22 and 44 minutes. Big threes. Gamer. Kyle Lowry's a fucking gamer. As much as you want to shit on, he's one of those guys. He's the market smarter than that team. Um, but damn does he hit big three pointers. Uh Van Fleet, sorry, Max Van Fleet, 17 points in 45 minutes. Um on our side, Jason Tatum had 43 minutes, 24 points, 10 boards. Good game from Tatum. I'm not going to shit on him. Yes, I am. <laughs> you had a chance to get this game closed, 98 to 90. This sequence stood out to me. Kemba Walker played excellent defense on Kyle Lowry, who just had a, hit a big three in this year, possession before. Kemba Walker uh, forced him into a fadeaway mid-range shot, bricked. Tatum drew a lucky foul on Siakam. I forget exactly how that happened, but a kick back out. And Jesus, was he wide open. Wide open was Jason Tatum with four minutes left in the fourth. But it was 98 to 90. It would have been brought him into a two possession game, and he clinked it. And then they got Tice goes for, gets an offensive rebound. Tatum gets the ball, gets fouled, goes to the line, misses two fucking free throws. Yep. The Celtics. Get the ball. They get another stop on the break. They give it to Jason Tatum. Kyle Lowry gets an offensive foul on Jason Tatum. Three offensive possessions to Jason Tatum. Clink, clink, clink. Yep. That can't happen as a superstar, Bill, on assignment. Budding Sorry. Superstar. Budding superstar. Sorry. Can't. Yeah. He yeah. kept you in the game. He kept yeah. you in the game when he went into the paint and, and, was, and was doing what he's good at. That – that fourth quarter triple sequence with him was infuriating. Uh, Brown somehow got 14 points shooting. <laughs> yeah, I don't bricks. know how that happened. Yeah. 37 point, 37 yeah. minutes. He sucked. Smart, seven turnovers, eight points, 41 minutes. Kemba, 15 points on nine shots. He came out and blasted himself. I don't know if you saw that interview. Oh, I saw that, yeah. He's like, I, that, that's just fuck terrible. I can't be like, shooting nine shots on a game four loss like that. That's terrible. Inexcusable. And as much as we want to give sh- Brad shit – Sammy Ojale, Grant Williams, and Brad Wanamaker each had about 12 minutes, mm-hmm. which is probably what they should have. It was just that one third quarter sequence where they all had four minutes together. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> that sucks, dude. Yeah. Um, but th- th- this, so here's my, here's, here's the good news, I guess, you, if you want to say that. Um, as far as stats are concerned, Celtics missed four, seven three throw, free throws. Raptors missed four. Second chance points were a big deal for the Raptors, but the Celtics out rebounded them. Their offensive rebounds was eight to six, and the total rebound Celtics had at 45 43. Turnovers, Celtics had 14, which is a lot, but the Raptors had 12. And the points in the paint, Celtics were 44 to 26. So my point here is this, the Raptors shot 40% as a team from three. Yep. Hit everything outscored you by 30 points from three point land. You had argue you had undeniably your worst game in the bubble, except for maybe the first one against Milwaukee, yep. which is a throwaway. And, and you were still in the game with two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. With, again, with, again, with your third like, best player on the court playing his, his worst game in Jalen Brown. Yeah. Just like game three, like they should have won this game. If they, if the shots would have came down, they should have won this game, but it just didn't happen tonight or last night or two nights ago, whenever we're released. Yeah. This. So, so to me, it's very simple, uh, and I'll continue to preach it. You need to learn how to win. Yeah. You need to learn, learn how to win big playoff games. This is the difference between a young roster, an experienced roster, a championship roster, and a non-championship roster. You're a better team, Boston Celtics. You are better flat out. You're better. Yeah. 
coach better, play better, get your head on straight, stop feeling sorry for yourself, stop acting like pussies, go out there and play basketball. Have fun and play basketball. It's like they're, you know, it, it was so evidently pressing. It was ridiculous. Hey, who do you think bitches more about the refs, Jason Tatum or Nick Nurse? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That is a conspiracy after Nick Nurse complained about Jason Tatum. He, hasn't, he really hasn't. I will say, a couple of those calls from the refs last night was leaning Toronto pr- pretty goddamn hard. Mm-hmm. Even, that, even that replay that they had with um, Tatum and Lowry going out of bounds. Now, look, that, that like, just screams NBA referee conspiracy. Oh, yes. They, they called it out on the Raptors. The replay is like, all right, yeah, you know, that, that pretty much looks like it goes off Lowry's, Lowry's thigh. Maybe it's a little bit close. We're not going to give it Celtics ball. We'll just give it a fuck. We'll just give it a jump ball. We'll, yeah. give it, we'll let them decide. You yeah. Celtics got it, but like still, like. Even when the commentator's just like, oh, yeah, it's off his leg. It's, yeah, yeah, it should be Celtics ball. <laughs> they come back. Yeah, we're going to do a jump ball. <laughs> that, that was like, there's three in a row, too. They called a uh, off it. They called a. Smart got a call for a pick on Van Fleet, mm. which he just kind of basically set a pick. Yeah. Um, they called Smart for a travel. <laughs> they called Smart for a travel. It, it is a travel, but it's an NBA travel. He lifted his pivot foot before he dribbled, which <laughs> yes. every fucking player does in yeah. the NBA on every single play. Yeah. And I forget what the other one was um, the on flop. the other end. The flop. Maybe, the maybe, the oh, maybe it was a flop. Lowry flop. Yeah. Which it was a flop, but you can't extend your arm, Jason Tatum. You can't extend it. We'll they're, see what the NBA has to say about it. They're getting him. They're getting him for the chicken wing move too. Yeah. That, he, that he's become really, really good at. But yeah. they're getting him for this for this fucking push off with the elbow. They're yep. calling that his extension too. Yeah, they're getting tight, man. I don't know. I don't know. That's I, why he's not a superstar because you're not getting away with those calls anymore. Nope. Superstars, NBA, get, superstars get away with that shit. NBA would rather have a game seven with Boston Celtics and Toronto Raptors than Jason Tatum be a superstar. Yep. I, I, I'm not afraid to say that. The NBA is known for that shit. That's for sure. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, game five will be on Monday. Today. And today. Today. Labor Day. Labor Day. Get saucy and, uh, and, and root for the Cs. Uh, can but, I just end it on one thing? Yep. Thank God the Queen's not here because he'd be saying Toronto in seven. He was blasted out of his mind wherever the hell he was yesterday. And we get that text at what? 1030 last night. One thirty. <laughs> Was it one thirty? <laughs> Raptors at seven. We didn't hear from him all day, texting throughout the game. I'm writing down show notes and shit, and we didn't hear from him all day. I woke up this morning and saw the timestamp: one thirty-seven. Raptors and seven. Bitch tits. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you, Bill. Thank God you don't have Snapchat because I had a few uh, snaps from him last night, and it was quite hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, no, I would not. I would not do well with the Snapchat. Mm-mm. Not with not with the Queen on the other side. <laughs> nope. Oh well, yeah. Jesus Christ, two two tough games from the uh, from our Boston Celtics. Game five is a must win to me. Yeah, absolutely. All in. Put all the chips in. You got to win that game. I have no faith actually in this team winning a game six and seven Mm-mm. to to win the series. Honestly. I think that they could win next game. Lose. I think they could win a game seven, winning two in a row. The way we just saw them perform, it, mentally they're yeah. They're st- and even though Kawhi's not there, they're still the defending champs, and they know how to win. They right. do. Oh. I will. They they better shoot forty percent though. No oh, hell yeah. Because if, if they, they shoot thirty and the Celtics shoot thirty, Celtics win by twelve. Yep. You know, so uh-huh. they're a, Celtics are a better team. They they. They gotta, they gotta learn how to fucking win. I, yeah. I don't, and I don't even, I don't know if I want to call them weak. They are mentally weak because they, that's what affected their shooting. But they fought so hard and stayed in that game that I have to give them credit for that. So they're not going to get walked over like they did last year with the Kyrie Celtics in Milwaukee. Yeah. Oh, no. That didn't happen. That's that. Th- these are two completely different scenarios. Yeah. Uh, but the mental fragility is definitely still there. No, absolutely. It's absolutely still there. And that comes from your lead that comes from your superstars. And to me that's Kemba and Tatum. And Kemba Walker taking nine shots is inexcusable. And Jason Tatum just he's just not there yet. Sorry. He's oh. not budding. Budding. Okay. Uh let's get on to uh, so some more <laughs> <laughs> New England Patriots news and notes. The New England Patriots are walking into the 2020 COVID season without a kicker, folks. They're not going to – they just figured, fuck it. They might 
not kick a single field goal. They got Cam Newton. It's just touchdown, two points, touchdown, two points, right? Is that the scenario that we're looking at here? I don't understand this one bit, man. I mean, the season, we're recording this on a Sunday. The season's one week away, and you do not have a kicker on your NFL team right now. It's great. Classic Belichick. Dude, yeah. Jake the Wonder Boy Bailey is just going to kick everything. He's going oh, to I mean, he's gonna be punting Bill, and, uh, and kicking, kicking and uh, slicking and dicking. Bill's like, how can I save more money on this cap for next year? I know. Jake Bailey, you're going to be doing both. Yeah. Okay, uh, folks, my wife uh, just walked in to screen, even though this is we're recording for our live show, but that's okay. Hello, Ingrid. Do you want to say hi to the people? Do you have anything to say about the Celtics last night? Move off the ball. Oh. Oh, she was screaming that. Move off the ball. I mean, yeah, we didn't touch which was, on that at Which all. was good advice. They did not pass the ball at all. 18 assists for the game is absolute garbage. And we yeah. all know my wife is a basketball guru. So <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening, Marcus Smart, pay attention, you yeah. son of a bitch. Uh, well, here's my thing. Uh, outside of the, uh, of the Wonder Boar ba- Bailey, it's too bad we won't see the right-wing propaganda kicker because that would have brought – that, that would have been amazing content all year long. Oh, I, yeah. The, the extra amount of ink that he had to use to blot that thing out <laughs> fucked up his equilibrium, I think. It, everything oh, was yeah. going wide right. Oh, yeah. What did I he say? I, he hit the porta potty? Like, he shaved <laughs> one so bad? He like a porta potty? That was, like, one of the news from, like, training camp is that he shaved one so bad he went to the right corner and hit the fucking porta potties. That's how bad he was missing them. Shit kicker. He's a shit oh, kicker. Oh, my God. Yeah, pretty much. And he – you know, you know he's never going to get signed from another team from this either. No, not with he's his done. PR he's disaster a- and his oh, yeah. shitty play. You're, he's You're done. done. Go Dunzo. back to West Virginia, buddy. Um, I will say this about Bill. He, he, he's left a position open before like this. This is, what, this is my guess. He's, he kept that extra roster spot for another position on the field to get a look at one more player and midweek sometime Nick Folk will be back on the field because oh, Nick Folk can come in and out of a lineup. No, they know what they're going to get from him. They're going to get a mediocre um, to less than mediocre kicker. And that's the best they're going to get. Yeah. So it will be interesting to see what Steven Gostowski does on Bill's Titans this year. Oh uh, yeah. And they got clowny. So Bill, you know, he's going on those China websites right now, getting that Dave on clowny Titans Jersey. Yes, he is. And that's not a racial yeah. remark, folks. You can find cheap uh, official jerseys out of uh, Wuhan, China. Just be careful. I'd wash it first. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, if Gostowski goes and has a good year, that's another bad check mark on Bill's, on Bill's yeah. GM record over the last few years, man. That's oh, absolutely, yeah. You yeah. wasted a fifth round pick on a, on a, on a Nazi shit kicker, and then mm-hmm. you're second best kicker of all time that has been here for 10 plus years gets hurt and you let him go and he walks to a conference like not rival but conference team and and performs that's 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 gonna be a tough pill to swallow and you got nick folk fucking out there you're going for fourth and seven at the 42 because he can't kick a 49 yard field goal (laughs) yeah pretty much that's gonna be tough to swallow they showed some of the guys that are available too just in case this nick folk gets like a bad taste in his mouth doesn't want to come back what about Adam Vinatieri? I take Adam Vinatieri in a second. He can hit it into the big games. You know, he was hurt last year, but he can hit the he can hit the big uh, field goals and games. And I take it. I take it just for the damn storyline. Yeah. Just for just for come a guy. To home. To, come on home and uh, and let's do something special here. I don't. I I think he's another guy that can't punch it in from forty five plus. Oh yeah, and we'd be doing the same thing. Fourth and seven from forty two, you're you're going for it. I'd rather have I'd rather root for Adam Venetaria than Nick Folk though in that position. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he, he did get hurt last year and he was shanking extra points. So he he might he, he might just be done. He's what is he like forty six or something? I think he's Bill's age, yeah, forty six, forty seven. <laughs> <laughs> he could be Bill's son. <laughs> I uh he did say you want to play to fifty though. Yeah, so, that's crazy. That's someone crazy. might someone might pick him up. It'd be awesome if he came back. He must hate his family. He just wanted to play till he's fifty. <laughs> All right, my daughter will be uh, graduating high school when I'm fifty. Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna stay till I'm fifty. Dude, we we talk we we talk about this all the time. If you had a if you could play professional sports, what would you play? It's a left-handed relief pitcher in baseball or kicker in the NFL. Yeah, like you could just play forever, collect four million bucks a year, whatever it is, never yeah. get hurt, and just yeah. like coast. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't blame I don't blame him one bit. Because you know that there's no cardio. You don't have to do anything for cardio. You just <laughs> oh, yeah. go there and you just kick. Yeah. 
Same with the reliever. Just go throw a couple pitches each day. You're good to go. Um, well, yeah. Why do we need you? I'm lefty. Oh, yes. Yes, we do here, need one of those. We do need 10 one of million, those. Here's $10 million and Bill will suck your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Bill? Never mind. Just drop your, just drop your pants. It's going to be good. Close your eyes. Uh, Bruins news and notes. Zidane Chara came out over the week. I don't think we touched on this. Maybe we did a little bit. Zidane Chara uh, came out over the uh, past week and basically said, I'm coming back and I'm not leaving. I, I want to play. I want to be a Bruin. It's going to be real hard for the Boston Bruins to let that guy go. So <laughs> yeah. I know that we have basically a number one hater, a uh, uh, Chara hater in the world on this sports show. So I am interested to see what your initial reaction was. Um, uh, on Char saying he, he wants to stay. Uh, I was a little disappointed. I was hoping he was going to go sail off into the sunset, go to Canopy Lake and ride the rooster ride one more time just so <laughs> people can take a picture of him. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if he stays, I hope it's for le- a lot less money, you know, a little minimum deal just uh, team-friendly so you can go out and sign some free agents. But uh, you can't be on the first line anymore. You got to drop no. it to the third line. Third line of penalty kill. That's all you need him for yeah that's the thing he's got to come back at like a million bucks yeah third line uh yeah third line 10 minutes 12, 11 minutes but you know you're, you're gonna he's gonna have to sit so he's gonna have to be a healthy scratch it and, and you gotta it, take that center up you gotta take the captain off of him you can't i don't know if you can do that uh give it to bergeron why won't you give it to bergeron i mean they could i don't think bergeron would take it if char is still on the team you're gonna take yeah, away true. a captain and the guy's still on the team to me that's all like i i think with the core if the core is still here even maybe ma- minus Krejci, if they decide to move on from him if you still have marshan bergeron pasta even coil to a lesser degree char is there um you know some of these guys that have that have been through it over the last three four you know, obviously the bigger guys, 10 plus years. Zidane Chara doesn't need a C on his jersey to be the captain. Yeah. And nobody else needs a C in the B to be the captain, right? So I, I put a little less stock in that than some people are putting into it. I don't even think Zidane Chara needs to fucking play to be for his – the biggest impact that he has on this team is his leadership and yeah. his experience. And, and um, you know, that can be done from – from the sidelines for a few games a year or, or a handful of games a year and definitely from the third line and penalty kill. Yeah. And as long as he's on the ice, he's going to be a, a force um, on the bench. So, I mean, it, it, if he comes, if he didn't come back, I, I think we'd be okay with it. I honestly think it's better if he does come back after the way that they went out this year and the uncertainty of next year. Yeah. I, I you know I I think it might actually benefit the team. What's gonna suck is Tory Krug has come out and said, "Give me that money, show, show me, me the, the money. money." Oh yeah, that dude's gone. I will not take a team friendly deal. I will not take a team friendly uh, years on my deal. I want paid. I want years. Give me that money, baby. What a refreshing thing to hear. <laughs> like yeah. you know. He didn't even mention Boston. Just like, look, this is the business deal. Like, this is the one chance I have to cash in. I'm going to cash in. Yeah. Whoever wants to give me the money, I'll give it. I, w- I would like to stay here, but if they don't have it, I understand that they probably don't. I, you know, he probably has that deal already made. They've been working. Uh, someone's, you know, his agent's been working on that deal since May. Bill's so, keep saying Detroit. Yeah. Bill's mentioning Detroit. They have the cap space. He's from there. He's yeah. Probably going there. That would make sense. The one thing we oh, yeah. know where he's not going is the Boston Bruins, and I don't blame him. $8 million for Tory Krug, which is what he's estimated to get. He doesn't do enough on the defensive end. He's not a penalty killer. He puts up points like crazy. Um, but you got Charlie McAvoy. You know, yeah. that, that money needs to go to Charlie McAvoy. He's better. Um, he's a better yeah. defenseman. And offensively, he can bring you a lot of the same thing. And you got to do it in Matt Grizzlick that can fill that role of Tory Krug. He can't do what Krug does, no. but he can fill the role – um, as pint-sized little nasty boy with a decent shot and, and quick. So, yeah, it'll be tough to see him go. He, he was a really good Bruin. He really got good in Boston. But, um, yeah, you know, that, that's what happens in the NHL. Time, time to move on. It's a big, yep. big offseason for the Bruins. They're going to have a little bit of room here. Not much, but a little bit of room. They need to go get a defender to put next to McAvoy, I think. They need mm-hmm. to go find somebody to put next to him. Yeah, they can't bring anyone up from Providence. They have to go out, either free agent, trade. Someone to, yeah, because I think he was struggling with Char there. I think he was just doing too much in the playoffs and it showed. Like, 
when he was double shifting because Charo is just such a fuck up. I mean, you need someone, to, you need a viable number two guy to go next to him, you know? Yeah. Charo I mean, was not that guy. Yeah, you could see you could see when they when he was unleashed when they unleashed him. I mean, he would go end to end. He would go yeah. line to line and, and 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 break into the zone, either get a shot off or or create something. The dude, the kid's got, uh, the kid's got high high potential, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's time to unleash it. And um, yeah, Brandon Carlo or Matt Grizzlick is not going to be the guy to help no. him do that. Uh, I I do hope if they keep Char, it doesn't limit someone like Vasile or um, Vakanainen. Yeah, was a young defenseman down there that they really like, or even Lazan, who we saw a little bit, who, who's got some potential. Um, but y- you can bring those guys up slowly, so I don't, oh. I don't think it'll hurt too much. And people get hurt in hockey, so you need you need depth. You need bodies, yeah. Uh, lastly, as we finish up here, uh, Boston Red Sox news and notes. The Boston Red Sox actually happened to win a game. Uh, the uh, other they're night. On it. They're on a two-game winning streak, Rich. They are, yeah, against the uh, against the Blue Jays. Xander Bogarts with a big home run in the ninth, tie it, and then um, some someone some uh, number sixty, I think it was Munoz, with an infield hit to bring in Vasquez on a bad throw. Um, yeah, exciting baseball play. Red Sox win it nine to eight over the Blue Jays. That puts them at a blistering fourteen and twenty-seven. You have anything uh, to add on the Red Sox, Ray? Uh, they needed to win. Actually, I'm sorry. I just uh, got a note from Bill in the field. We do not have, we ran out of time to talk about the Red Sox today. Um, hopefully, we'll get back to it next time. This has been the Simple Mind Sports Show, Monday, Labor Day headlines, September 7, 2020. Correct. Remember that. Correct. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. See ya. I like, how baseball, I like how baseball is now becoming soccer to you, and we don't have time to cover well, that. That's the joke, right? I treat baseball as much as I hate soccer. That's I how much it. it's good. I love it. Love that's, it. How much, that's how much the Boston Red Sox deserve in terms of coverage and, uh, and media attention, as much as the New England Revolution. Now, do you also notice Which that— Which is the, none. Do you know how the Queen's on assignment, obviously? Yes, of course. We finished this very fast. Because we didn't have someone interrupting us every two seconds. I also know how Wallach and Jim uh, Jim Murray feel when, like, you know, Felger or Maz is in there or Toucher and Rich is in there and they get to sit in the big boy chair. Yeah. That, that's how I feel today. You got the uh, you got the old Maz chair today? Yeah, I got the big boy chair. Uh, I will say this, totem pole of dumb, when, the, when you have a Zoom session with less than three people with just two, yeah. it's unlimited time. So we're actually right at 40 minutes and oh. now. Oh. So, uh, producer Ray, I know your hat wasn't on today, but producer Rich's hat was on, and I've been watching the clock the whole time, understanding that we would not get a countdown with just two people. So, um, two we shit. have 15, 14, 3, 2, see ya. Bye.